so I'm off on the Christmas break. And yeah, I've already been running this morning, but I fancy going for a walk. Um, and I'm trying out a new Pokemon Go app on the Apple Watch. And since I was going for a walk and I haven't done an anatomy video this week, I thought I'd talk about the anatomy of gait uh, since I'm walking. Because we talk a lot about the muscles of hip abduction and hip adduction and hip flexion and hip extension. And we, we hinted on those in the last video. But how often do we talk about why we use these muscles and why they're important? And we use these muscles all the time when we're walking and running. And just when you're walking around there, they get used a lot. So in the last video when we talked about the knee, I talked about the quadriceps femoris muscles and we talked about the hamstrings and I mentioned that other big group of muscles. Um, and this is a group of muscles that are bigger than the hamstrings. Ew. This is a group of muscles that are bigger than the hamstrings and almost as big as the uh, quadriceps femoris group and these are the hip adductors that group there medially um, so why on earth are these muscles so big and if we've got hip adductors we've also got hip abductors but we've also got muscles that are involved in internal rotation and external rotation of the hip and we do all of these actions with every movement every step that we take when we're walking so as I'm walking now one foot comes off the ground while the other foot is on the ground. So during the gait cycle, when I'm walking, I land on my heel, so I plant on my heel and rock forward my weight to my, the ball of my foot. And then the foot moves behind me and I push off from my toe. And then there's a recovery phase while that, or a swing phase while that leg is swung through the air and the other foot is in a stance phase. Um, so with walking, one foot is always touching the ground at a time, whereas in running, you might have both feet off the ground at any time. But as I'm walking, as I take one foot off the ground, I want to keep my pelvis level. So the hip abductors, which abduct the lower limb away from the hip, so I abduct the lower limb away from the body, they're acting when I take one foot off the ground to keep my pelvis level and as my pelvis stays level my other foot swings through and plants and swaps and vice versa so with every every time my right leg is off the ground my left hip abductors are contracting to hold my pelvis level so my pelvis stays level it stays flat as we're walking which makes everything a lot more efficient so walking is, is needs to be a very efficient motion but the other thing that happens is that my pelvis is tilting, as in it's, it's, my pelvis is staying level. So if you, if you touch your two acis, your two acises, your two anterior superior iliac spines, you should feel that your pelvis stays level as you walk. But your pelvis twists, um, so it moves anteriorly as your leg swings through. So if you, if you touch your two acis, acis is, if you touch your two anterior superior iliac spines, you'll see that your pelvis moves anteriorly and posteriorly as you walk. But if you look at your feet, your toes hopefully keep pointing forward so that you can land on your heels, move to your toes and push off and what have you. So this means that if you think about it, as your pelvis twists then the femur has got to rotate within the acetabulum um, to counteract that twisting to keep your toe pointing forward so as my left leg swings forward and as my pelvis on the left side moves forwards then I have to externally rotate my left femur to keep my toe pointing forwards A up, a wild Pikachu, but the watch doesn't really show me where. I guess I have to go to the app. So we have external and internal rotation of the hip. So internal, internal rotation is uh, the femur rotating internally, the femur rotating medially. Um, so if you're 
knee was flexed, your lower leg would move outwards. Many of the, many of the adductor muscles are described as internal rotators. So with the adductor group, we have gracilis, which we looked at last week when we looked at the knee. Gracilis is that thinner muscle, superficial, runs in the medial compartment of the thigh and inserts into pes anserinus. And we have adductor magnus, um, adductor longus, and adductor brevis. And they're all essentially running from the pubis to uh, the femur. Gracilis obviously runs to the tibia. Um, we have pectineus as well, um, which is a much smaller muscle. And the adductors are generally described as adducting um, the, the thigh at the hip, but also having a role in internal rotation or medial rotation. We have a whole bunch of small muscles in the hip joint which are external rotators. Uh, these are obturator internus, obturator externus, piriformis, gemellus inferior, gemellus superior, um, and others. And these pass from within the hip or covering or around that obturator membrane that was within the obturator foramen, and they pass out to the greater trochanter somewhere like that. Um, and then when they, when they pull, when they contract, that means they can externally rotate the femur. Uh, so the femur rotates externally or rotates laterally. So as I move my foot forwards and my pelvis moves forwards, I externally rotate my femur to keep my foot pointing forwards. And then as I plant it and move backwards, the, or rather as I plant it and the foot moves backwards, I, as I move over the foot, then I internally rotate, I immediately rotate my femur um, to step over the foot. So we have internal and external rotation with every footstep. And we have the hip, adduct, the hip abductors acting with every footstep to keep your pelvis level. But what about that massive great big group of adductor muscles then that are in the medial thigh? What do they do? So don't forget that the femur isn't running straight up the thigh, the femur is running at an angle. So it's running from the knee and then running superiorly and laterally out towards the hip. So it's running from here and out here. So you can feel your greater trochanter if you palpate, lateral, palpate your lateral hip. That's your greater trochanter. So then these hip adductors are running from pub pubis in the midline and adductor magnus runs from the initial tuberosity as well. These are all fanning out and spreading and filling up that medial thigh compartment and running to the femur. So they're big muscles of stability. So as I'm walking, I'm potentially becoming unstable with every step. I'm stepping onto one leg. I'm balancing on one leg with every step and I have momentum carrying me through. We have all these other muscles moving things. This, is, this isn't even thinking about the muscles of the leg, the muscles acting at the ankle, the muscles that are responding to those forces and what have you and, and uh, balancing me at the foot. But those big hip adductor muscles then are, are stabilizing me as I step with one leg uh, and move forward. Those big hip adductor muscles are balancing me, stopping me from falling over, stopping me from top, toppling. And you can feel this as you're walking along, as I said last time, as you're walking, you can feel when your quadriceps contract, you can feel when your hamstrings contract, you can also feel when your adductors contract. If you, if you palpate your adductors when you're walking, you'll find that as you step with one leg and move the other leg in that swing phase through, you'll feel your adductor muscles tense. And that tension shows you those muscles are working at that point. So that's why they're so big, because you use them as much as hamstrings and uh, quadriceps. The wind is building. We got a storm coming tonight. I just nipped out while it's the <laughs> in between rain showers. Um, Moving on from the last video in the knee, um, and we're not considering the ankle and the foot at the moment, and we're not even considering gait in much detail. I'm just talking about walking gait. Uh, but considering the muscles of the hip, when you look at the adductors and the abductors and the extensors and the flexors, and the internal rotators and external rotators of the hip. Don't just learn them as a, as a rote list of muscles. Um, think about 
when we do all these movements, when we're walking and running and sitting and standing and jumping, to think of that function. Our legs and our hips and our knees and our feet and ankles are all about walking and running and this bipedal gait that we've evolved. So think about how these muscles contribute to that. Now, I have no idea where that Pikachu was. So just in recording this short video, I'll have walked uh, probably over 4,000 steps by the time I get back. It's 4,000 steps, 4,000 of these movements, just recording this short video and going out for a short walk. Um, it shows you how much these muscles get used. And some of these muscles are quite small. Some of these muscles are very big. I didn't have any an anatomy lab, didn't have any models to work with, so I wanted to think about what I could talk about, and I can use myself as a model, and um, let's see, think about the movements, think about why we make these movements, whenever you think about muscles, their attachments, and their innovations, and all that other stuff that we list in our learning outcomes. So squirrels use their hip muscles in completely different ways to us, I think. <laughs> 